pomegranate, pomegranate, pomegranate. We have all heard of the so-called magic fruit, especially because of its growing place in the beauty community. These days, you can find pomegranate not only in meals like Ashe Anar, an Iraqi and Iranian soup seen here, but in many beauty products as well. Pomegranate can be found in anti-aging eye creams, facial cleansers, moisturizers, lip balms, serums, facial mists, scrubs, masks, sunscreens, and even tanning lotions and towelettes. But what is it about this beautiful fruit that makes it so it can be presented and thrive in cosmetics? Well, let's go back a little bit. Where does the pomegranate come from? Originally, the fruit was discovered thousands of years ago in Persia, a region today we call the Middle East and more specifically, Iraq and Iran. It soon spread north to Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia. And in 100 BC, the wonderful fruit was brought east by a Han Dynasty representative from China via the Silk Road, along with coriander, walnuts, peas, cucumbers, caraway seeds. Han Dynasty Watchtower at the eastern edge of the Silk Road in Dunhuang, a city in Gansu province. While going on the long eastern journey, the pomegranate rooted itself in some countries that happened to be on the way such as Afghanistan, Pakistan, northern India, and parts of the Himalayan region, such as Nepal and Bhutan. It spread through Turkey and northern Africa, and it eventually became so prominent to the Mediterranean basin that the pomegranate can be found in certain European works of art, such as this painting done by Italian Renaissance master Sandro Botticelli in 1487, and even in the names of beautiful cities such as Granada, Spain, whose name literally means pomegranate in Spanish. Today, we can find the pomegranates in California and Arizona, though they're usually only harvested for their juice. Now then, why is the pomegranate so supposedly awesome? Well, they're packed full of antioxidants. But now you have to ask, what's so great about antioxidants? What are they? Well, antioxidants are substances or nutrients that have the ability to prevent or slow down oxidative damage to our body. When the cells in our body use oxygen, and all of our cells do, free radicals or byproducts are formed. Let's go back to Chemistry 101. The human body is composed of tons of different cells, and those cells are composed of tons of different molecules, which are in turn composed of tons of different types of atoms. An atom has a nucleus, neutrons, protons, and electrons. Electrons are the little puzzle pieces that bond atoms together. Take this water molecule. Two hydrogen atoms bond with an oxygen atom to make what we know as water. But if we look at an oxygen atom by itself, we see that it has two electrons on the inner shell and six electrons on the outer shell. These shells are extremely important when deciding the atom's stability. The inner shell can contain up to two electrons. The next shell can contain up to eight. For example, if we look at the oxygen atom again, we notice that the outer shell only has six electrons. Because of this, it will want to bond with other atoms to borrow their electrons. That's why water is so atomically sound. It only has one electron, but it wants to fill up its shell and have two electrons. Meanwhile, oxygen only has six electrons, but it wants to have eight. So hydrogen and oxygen simply share each other's electrons. Oxygen is then left with eight electrons, and hydrogen is left with two. The molecule is balanced and happy. So why is this necessary to know? Well, free radicals are formed when these atomic bonds split and leave odd, random, unpaired electrons. These free radicals are extremely unstable and try to regain its stability by stealing other stable atoms as electrons. They attack the nearest stable atom and steal its electrons. That atom, in response, becomes another free radical itself and needs electrons. This process snowballs and eventually disrupts the life of the cell itself. Now, where do antioxidants come in? Well, antioxidants simply donate some of their electrons to the free radical to neutralize it, which puts an end to the electron stealing. The antioxidants don't become free radicals because they are stable in either form. They are the scavengers in the equation, simply preventing cell and tissue damage that could lead to disease. Speaking of disease, what do you have to look out for if you don't get enough antioxidants? Well, heart disease is a big one. The cause of death in the United States, England, Canada, and Wales, and is basically living proof that we need to eat healthier and exercise more. 
macular degeneration, diabetes, and certain types of cancer can all be contributed to oxidative damage as well. So where do you find these antioxidants anyway? Common ones are vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and selenium. You can get most of these vitamins and minerals from fruits and vegetables, with the exception of selenium, which you can find in nuts, grains, eggs, shellfish, and garlic. Another group of powerful antioxidants are phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are simply chemical compounds that are naturally found in plants. Some phytochemicals include flavonoids and polyphenols, lycopene, lutein, and lignans, and all can be found in fruits, vegetables, and grains. If you're not sure if you're getting the vital antioxidants you need, here's a simple trick. Shop for the bright colored fruits and vegetables. Lutein is found in yellow to orange pigmented fruits and vegetables, like corn, cantaloupe, butternut squash, and mango. Lycopene is found in red and purple fruits and vegetables, like tomato, watermelon, and berries. Now then, how does this relate to pomegranate? Well, pomegranates naturally have a huge amount of these antioxidants and various other nutrients as well, including potassium, vitamin A, B vitamins, more specifically B3 or niacin, B5, pantothenic acid, and B9, folic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, and iron. The edible seeds contain fiber as well. Now, we know that vitamin C and vitamin E are antioxidants, but what else does the pomegranate contain? Well, the pomegranate has tons of polyphenols, anthocyanins, tannins, punicalogen, and elagic acid. Various studies show that the pomegranate has up to three times the antioxidant power of green tea and red wine. Because of all these nutrients and antioxidants, the pomegranate may help transform your body from the inside out. This fruit may reduce the risk of heart disease, help prevent plaque buildup in your arteries by reducing the oxidation of bad cholesterol, reduce inflammation, be effective against osteoarthritis, prevent various cancers, enhance immune function, fight effects of aging, promote production of red blood cells, expel tapeworms, strengthen the bladder, strengthen the gums, soothe mouth and throat ulcers, reduce dental plaque, and reduce diarrhea. Pretty cool, huh? Aspect of this fruit. Remember those free radicals? Well, along with starting nasty diseases, they also speed up premature aging. But if you apply pomegranate directly to your skin, those nasty free radicals will be halted. The pomegranate has been found to reduce photoaging or the damage to your skin that occurs from exposure to ultraviolet light. That's why you might be finding pomegranate in sunscreen soon enough. This lovely fruit inspires regeneration of skin cells in your body and reduces wrinkles. It supports the healing of wounds and may even protect you against skin cancer due to the elagic acid present in the fruit. So obviously, why wouldn't you want to incorporate pomegranates in cosmetics? With so many benefits, it's amazing that this fruit hasn't been examined longer for its incredible antioxidant properties. I hope you guys enjoyed this informative video. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and follow me. Links will be in the underbar as to where I got all this incredible information. Have a great day!